Connection. I'm Mara Rubin here with you on Enlightened World Network. And today's topic is the comforts of routine. Uh, routine can be something that gives us stability and anchoring and uh, and it's less than positive side. It can be deadening and robotic, but um, it does have its good features too. So we're going to explore those today. And before we get started, let's take a minute or two to get present. Let's take a deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And imagine clean, crisp oxygen flooding into your lungs, flowing into your bloodstream, nourishing all your cells, all your organs, bringing vital life energy to your body and being. And as you exhale, exhale any tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's take another deep breath in through your nose and hold it. And this time, imagine brilliant, bright light lighting you up from the inside out, illuminating and electrifying all your molecules, your electrons, lighting up your cells, creating this brilliant beam of light coming out from your heart into the world. And as you exhale, exhale any remaining tension, stress, negativity, fatigue. And now let's just gently press our palms together softly, 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 rub your fingers against your palms to feel the deliciousness of that sensation, like to really feel it and bring yourself present to this remarkable physical form that's the vehicle through which you experience life. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Good morning, Rosalyn. Happy Friday to you as well. And uh, it's great to be here with you. Thank you so much for joining us and for everybody else who's joining us, welcome. And it's great to have you here as well. And uh, so we're talking about the comfort of routine. So uh, routine is such a cool, um, it, it's, a, it's a cool topic when we, when we look at the, the pluses and minuses, right? Like we can, be so steeped in routine that we kind of go through our lives robotically, just doing all the routines and not really being present. And yet at other times, when, when we're experiencing disruption, uncertainty, um, even, even feeling, you know, when we're feeling kind of, um, adrift, then at, at those times, routine can be a salvation in a way because it can get us in action to be, um, to be in motion. And um, the being in motion might be, might be helping us to move through uh, depression or anxiety or um, or fear, uh, you know, when we have when we have certain patterns, they they allow us to um, ground. Sometimes, you know, if we're allowing ourselves to be present to those patterns, and even even sometimes if we're not, you know, if we're facing uh, challenges to to just be doing something that is a routine uh, can can give us a sense of stability that can then carry over and and um, move us from from potentially a negative state into a more resourceful one. So I, I'm wondering what kind of experience you have regarding routine. Um, like for me, this, this morning uh, meeting is part of my weekly weekday re routine. And it's a commitment that I have that I get to rally for what, you know, like last night I didn't sleep all that well and woke up really exhausted this morning. And if I didn't have this commitment, so maybe it's not just routines, but it's commitments as well. If I didn't have this commitment, I probably would have stayed in bed. And um, so having this routine rousted me up, invited me to rally to be able to be here with you. And um, so that 
that is a really powerfully positive thing for me to um, be moving me out of one state into another. So maybe we're not just talking about routine, uh, but we're talking about um, commitments to to others too. So Rosalind, oh my gosh, to your point, our pets like routine. 100%, 100%, so do children. And I think, you know, like there's a continuity that makes for a feeling of safety and disrupting those routines can be feeling really, really disruptive. Kimberly says, I like this topic. I'm thrilled, to, I'm, I'm delighted to know that Kimberly, great. So my cat for sure, for sure has routines and, and they're goofy routines. Like she, uh, she needs me to pet her at a certain place. Like we will walk to the petting post every morning or a couple times during the day, she will lead me over to the petting post and I pet her vigorously and love her up. And then, and then she goes and eats. And um, this morning I didn't get to do that with her. And she, she is very, very much a, um, a, an animal of, of a habit, a creature of habit for sure. And so I guess when, when I'm talking about routine, um, I, I am also talking a little bit about habits. Like part of, part of my morning routine usually is get up, make the bed, you know, and go and do other stuff, you know, take care of other things. And sometimes when I break that routine, uh, uh, you know, of all the morning things that I normally do, then I don't, I, I feel a little bit disrupted. And so um, it's interesting, like I, today, especially, I'm just really grateful for this the routine and the commitment of being here with you because it got me out of my way. And so it makes sense to me that there are commitments that we can, commitments and routines that we can create for ourselves uh, that are life affirming. And so, it, you know, this is interesting. I do not know a lot, a lot about Montessori, the Montessori method. I know it's pretty remarkable. And um, I was speaking with a client yesterday who is a Montessori, a Montessori teacher, instructor. And um, she was, we were talking about routine and how uh, kids really benefit from having routine. I don't think kids are the only ones um, because there is a comfort. There is a comfort in, in knowing, okay, now I do this, you know, like this is the structure. It's a structure within which to be able to live. Now, the thing is that we can become a slave to routine. And when that happens, then we kind of allow ourselves to get deadened or to be, to be dead or robotic in the in the fulfillment of these routines. Um, I, we, can, we can easily, maybe too easily, use a routine as an excuse to not be present. Um, and uh, I, I guess different people have different thresholds for, for routine. Like if I had to do exactly the same thing every day, um, throughout the different times of the day, it would make me crazy. There's no way that I would be able to do that um, because I, I do need variety and having certain anchors for, for um, portions of the day or certain contexts to be able to do certain things. Like for me, um, my clients, I see my clients Monday, Tuesdays, Wednesdays mostly and that, that provides me some, some level of structure, which is really, really valuable to me. And then I have a lot more flexibility on uh, Thursdays and Fridays and the weekends, of course, but 
you know, like it, it, I have enough variety. I guess we all get to find what our sweet spot is in terms of, of um, routine and variety. So routine doesn't necessarily mean predictability because, you know, so for example, for me with my clients, there's always something new popping up. You know, there's always something stimulating and, and um, engaging that pops up. Um, so there's variety there. Um, but if I had to do, like, if I, I, I'm not a temperament that would do well, for instance, in, um, in a, like a factory work kind of environment where you just do the same thing over and over, literally, I think it would drive me out of my mind. Some people, I imagine that can be, that can be soothing perhaps, you know, to be able to get into the rhythm of something and to be able to do something that is, is um, repetitive and predictable. That can be very um, comforting for some of us. And, and the interesting thing, you know, it's, well, there's so many interesting things, right? But um, with COVID, COVID was initially a profound disruption of the, the standard routines of life, right? Our, our, our modes of interaction, our, our, social, um, our social patterns of engagement, all kinds of things were tremendously disrupted, all kinds of routines. And then, then we got into a routine or, or a pattern of wearing masks and, and um, isolating more and keeping distance. And now as uh, things are kind of wrapping up a bit, um, as I, you know, my inclination is to say, as things are returning more to normal, um, I think that this is also a disruption, like how do we, a lot of people are having anxiety about re-entering society. And, you know, we, uh, I use the word normal. And the fact is we, we developed a new norm, didn't we? You know, the norm of social distancing, the norm of staying home more, of being more socially isolated, right? And so now what is it to come back into? into society, what is, what is this new norm that's developing? So there's been so much social disruption. Good morning, good morning, Bernadette. Happy April Fool's Day. <laughs> um, Bernadette says, happy April and don't be a fool today, LOL. Yes, um, happy April all. And I don't know, what, I wonder if anybody knows the origin of April Fool's Day, I don't. Um, that might be an interesting thing to, to see. Dido, I don't know if you're here with us this morning, but you're always good for these things. If you are, I'd be appreciative if you could find out what, what's the origin of April Fool's Day. So Rosalind says, I'm looking forward to doing something different at work. I applied for a new job and ranked number three. I'm not sure how many applied, but I'm hoping to interview and have a different job within the same organization. Good for you, Rosalind. I think, you know, having some variety is it for, for some people having variety is a really essential thing for other people, not so much, you know, so we're, we're built differently in terms of our needs, but good for you to be um, expanding within, within the organization. I wish you great success with that. And so Bernadette says, reintegration is fearful. So first, I'm going to encourage you to restate that. Um, the, the thought of reintegration, I, I feel fear at the thought of reintegration uh, into society, coming, coming out of our isolation. Um, I think, Bernadette, you are absolutely not alone in experiencing fear and or anxiety about reintegrating into 
into society because we have been for the past two years, we have been enculturated to be afraid of each other, right? To be afraid of social interaction, to be afraid that if we go out, we're going to, you know, suffer um, dire health consequences, that, um, that we're very much at risk, that other people pose a risk to us, you know, so that there's been a deeply enculturated alienation from other people and from the the presumed safety that we used to operate under right and rosslyn says replying to bernadette after being in prison question mark so um that's an interesting thing rosslyn um i'm quite i i'm quite certain that folks who have come out of prison have have many, many challenges reintegrating. And in a way you can imagine that we, through the through our isolation, have been in a um, social, socially imposed prison of one sort or another, right? And um, the routines of isolation, of distancing, of masking, of of just caution uh, and and I'm going to say probably more than caution, fear about um, about engagement with others. So Bernadette says, "Prison of my four walls." Exactly. We we have we have been enculturated to be creating our own prison right and and really really the biggest prison is the prison of the mind and because we have been um conditioned to be uh be focused on danger and safety and what safety looks like and how safety looks like being in our own four walls and being separate and, and separated from one another, um, it's, it's a big deal to create a new or, or to overcome those, those emotional and psychological barriers, right? And so um, the things, the things that we used to take for granted, the things that maybe used to be a routine, we've developed a lot of new routines, right? And um, the, this conversation today started out with talking about the comfort of routine, um, particularly, particularly when we are faced with dangers you know, when we're faced with what might be perceived as threats, then um, routine offers at least an illusion of security in some ways. And uh, I think it, it can be too easy to become dependent upon those routines uh, that aren't necessarily the the most beneficial to us too. So, you know, like growing up, for most of my growing up, my dad would have a drink with dinner. And, and I don't know if it was always one drink. And, you know, it wasn't always the most positive routine because he would get less than happy, you know, like he, he would be kind of angry or um, aggressive, you know, um, with that drink. And so, but that was the routine. It was a routine. And sometimes we do become prisoners of our own routines where they just become habits that, uh, that own us rather than a tool that we are employing to 
support ourselves in, in a positive way. You know, so it's interesting. I, I generally, I said, one of my routines in the morning is, has been typically, Bernadette says, liquid courage about a drink. Yes, well, yes. And, and for a while there, I was having such trouble with sleeping that the, the way that I could enable myself to sleep was to drink before I went to bed. So I'd have a drink before I'd go to bed so that it would knock me out kind of. And um, while that was a routine that, um, that had a, we can say it's a mixed, it was a mixed bag, right? Because certainly the alcohol wasn't the best thing for my system, but it enabled me to sleep. Was it a restful sleep? No, but at least I could sleep. And then it, it just became a routine and it wasn't, it wasn't really life affirming. I didn't feel great when I woke up. I managed to sleep, but it wasn't a restful sleep. And um, I knew it wasn't great for my body. So that kind of routine, you know, for a while, I, I kind of locked myself into that, that prison of my mind, like that this was a pattern that was helpful, but hurtful and all of all kinds of things around that and and eventually I just said the heck with this and and um, fortunately have found other more healthful means to be able to sleep uh, better. So um, routine in and of its own, I guess is relatively benign, but it's a, it's a matter of what we bring to those routines. Do we bring consciousness? Do we bring awareness to those routines? Do we allow them to be a way to ground ourselves, to presence ourselves, and, and therefore, you know, maybe create ease in ourselves, maybe create expansiveness, um, maybe allow us to move into a new state or um, or are we fulfilling those routines in a robotic way um, where we're we're separating ourselves from ourselves or where we're using the routine as a way to not be present um, I, I was going to say that you know with this making of the bed kind of thing I do notice that when I make my bed, as goofy as this might sound, I notice that when I make my bed, I, I feel a greater ease. And it may be that it's because that was, um, that was something that was deeply patterned in me as a kid growing up, you know, is get up and make your bed. And so maybe there's some kind of old psychological pattern that's behind that uh, and the ease that it brings for me. But it feels neater, it feels, it feels, it feels more ordered. And it's interesting because I, in many ways, I uh, rebel against order, but, but having some kind of structure. And as, a, as we've been saying, we all have different thresholds for what that structure might look like but or, or how rigorous that structure needs to be but having some kind of structure it provides provides its own reward you know uh, and, and so Kimberly says I love starting my day off with you and move into the day and flow into the day more positive thank you for that Kimberly thank you thank you I love starting the day with you guys. It really, it is a really powerfully beneficial um, opportunity for me. I'm so grateful. So um, Bernadette says, making my bed makes me feel more organized, right? Isn't that the case? So, um, and it's a funny thing, but it makes me feel like, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going in a, I, I don't know, organized direction, 
um, grounded, whatever it is. It's, it's really interesting. So Rosslyn says, how does ritual play into routine? Are those two different things? Well, I think they can be, I think they can be the same and I think they can be different. You know, um, when we think about ritual or when I think about ritual, I think about it as um, relating to presence. You know, that ritual is something that allows us to focus our attention. It's a practice through which we focus our attention and presence ourselves. Um, and, and that's kind of what I'm talking about in terms of the upside of routine. Ritual doesn't have to be something that's practiced regularly. Um, routine is something that's, I guess, more bounded by repetition. But um, I know that we, it's interesting for folks that have uh, OCD, obsessive compulsive disorder, they might have certain rituals that um, they need to perform enable, in order to enable themselves to do something. Like you might have to knock uh, five times on a door before they... Um, they open it or I, you know, I'm just making that up, but that kind of ritual, I, I think that that's a, that's in a different category. That's certain, that's an extreme example of when um, routine or ritual or routine starts owning us and, and where we become a slave to that kind of pattern and you know, if, and then you can go into superstition, you know, like um, ball players often have some really interesting rituals that are part of their, um, their performance in their, in their profession, you know, and, and that's an interesting thing too. It, you know, maybe, it, maybe it's, I, I could be taking the whole bed making thing to a level of superstition too, where, you know, if I don't make my bed, then such and such and such is going to happen or I'm not going to have as positive a day. Um, you know, we, we can take all these things to extreme. And I guess that's where we're looking at the, uh, the presence that we bring to these routines that we may have. So uh, Kimberly says, open mind, open heart for positive opportunities. I love it. And um, I, I think that we can, we can find routines that are enlivening and, and engage in those as long as they remain uh, enlivening. Oh my gosh. So uh, Bernadette, I missed your comment here. My routine in the morning is to open my eyes and make my bladder happier. <laughs> I missed that one. Yes. Um, that's a morning routine too, is, is uh, visiting, visiting the uh, porcelain throne, right? Um, Kimberly says, I feel the same way about the bed, LOL. So uh, lots of us were probably raised by starting the day by making your bed or, you know, when you get out of the bed, the first thing you do is make it. It does, it does ground me into the day. And actually, I think somebody, I don't know who it was, but um, it was probably one of the peak performance people was talking about completing things. And so uh, the ritual of making the bed or the routine of making the bed is kind of ending the sleep cycle, you know, like ending the sleep cycle and officially starting the day. So it's creating this transition that, that is physical because you're actually making the bed and it's like, okay, made the bed, ready to start the day. So it's an interesting psychological um, foil or, or uh, device that we can use to be setting ourselves up for the start of the day. Who would think that making a bed could have such an important um, implication for us? Anyway, that's it for today and for this week, given that it's Friday and happy April Fool's Day. Um, may we all, you know, the fool in the tarot deck 
is a really interesting card. Uh, we think of a fool as as somebody that is um, unwise. Um, I, I, we should have looked it up. But anyway, um, the fool in the tarot deck, at least the way that I uh, uh, that I think about it, is that the fool is the person or the the consciousness that's open to all possibility, without preconception. And um, may, may we have the joy and wonder of the, the uh, beginner's mind. That's what I think of as the fool. And so let's have that be our celebration today. Love to all of you and um, have a great weekend. I'm Mira Rubin. This is The Core Connection. And I go live here each weekday morning at 9 a.m. Eastern on the Enlightened World Network Facebook page. And please, please check out the other awesome programming on Enlightened World Network, Enlightened World Living, EWN One with the Earth. And until next time, I really hope to see you back here again soon, maybe as soon as Monday. So until then, so, so, so much love.